How's it going guys? It is 2.41 a.m. Saturday, July 23rd here in Japan, and we have a difficult question for pathology slash internal medicine. Uh, so before we get started, please subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it. Give the video a like, really appreciate it. Find me on Instagram at melman underscore medical, M-E-H-L-M-A-N underscore medical, links down below. Find me on Telegram. Links to the Telegram group and channel down below, not start the clip. 38-year-old woman, one month history of puffy eyes and swelling of her legs. During the past year, she's had increasingly heavy and irregular menses and pain in her shoulders and legs. Blood pressure 110 over 80, heart rate 55. Serum studies show hyponatremia, hypercholesterolemia, elevated serum creatine kinase. Question wants to know, uh, what else is most likely to be seen as patient? Let's just whip through the answer choices here. Choice A, colothiasis, wrong fucking answer. This refers to gallstones. Uh, fat, 40s, female, fertile, okay, classic demographic for cholesterol stones. Increased risk in pregnancy as well. You need to know uh, progesterone slows biliary uh, peristalsis, as well as uh, ureteral peristalsis tangentially can cause pyelonephritis. Uh, high estrogen levels in pregnancy, upregulate HMG reductase. So the combination of the estrogen progesterone effects incre uh, increase risk for cholesterol stones in pregnancy. You need to know hereditary spherocytosis. Patients get pigment stones. That's on NBME exam. So you treat hereditary spherocytosis with splenectomy. And the reason for that is because not only is that going to cure the anemia as a result of RBC turnover, but because of that turnover with the bilirubin liberated uh, from the spleen, uh, those patients often get pigment stones. So you're going to do cholecystectomy in those patients as well. Point is, wrong fucking answer. Choice B, cubital tunnel syndrome, wrong answer. This is a diagnosis that is not high yield for step one, but exceedingly high yield for 2CK all over the exam. You need to know this is, this is impingement of the ulnar nerve at the elbow. Okay, so you're going to get paresthesias, sensory changes down the medial aspect of the forearm into the fourth and fifth fingers. If you only get it from... Uh, the paresthesia sensory changes from the uh, wrist distally. That's, of course, uh, Guy and Canal syndrome, not cubital tunnel syndrome. But USMLE not only wants you to know the diagnosis, but they also want uh, overnight elbow splint as the treatment for cubital tunnel syndrome. Wrong fucking answer. Should I see giant cell arteritis, aka temporal arteritis? Wrong answer. Usually patient will be over the age of 50. A patient here has pain in their shoulders and legs. So we could entertain the notion that this could be polymyalgia rheumatica. Once again, patients usually over 50. And this patient has increased creatine kinase, which means it's not PMR. Okay, so I don't want to go on a long fucking tangent right now. I've made other YouTube clips here on the audio cue bank on this. But you, you should know that polymyositis has elevated creatine kinase and or weakness on physical exam. Polymyalgia rheumatica doesn't, which the latter is the one that's associated with giant cell arteritis. It's not the answer here. Uh, also, of course, IV methylprednisolone, steroids prevent blindness, do that prior to biopsy. Wrong fucking answer. Choice D, granulomas, wrong answer, could refer to a myriad of diagnoses on USMLE, uh, Crohn disease, sarcoidosis, okay, tuberculosis, the latter being caseating. So, uh, borreliosis. Okay. So granulomas, uh, when we talk about thyroid dysfunction, you should also know subacute granulomatous thyroiditis. Okay. Long discussion points we can go on. Point is wrong fucking answer. Choice E transaminase, the correct answer. This patient is Hashimoto. Now look, this isn't me trying to be entertaining or fancy. Transaminitis, increase ALT and or AST from the liver is on the 2CK internal medicine material. So you'll get a patient, you need to know not just the buzzy findings of weight gain, cold intolerance, brittle hair, dry skin, doughy skin, that stuff's kind of too easy, all right? They'll often omit those findings from questions, especially on 2CK. You need to know menstrual irregularities, okay? Hypothyroid myopathy is what this patient has with the increased CK. You can get bradycardia. You say, well, the heart rate's not that low. That's That could be normal. Yeah, you're right. But it's convenient in questions. You'll see the heart rate between 50 and 60. Hyponatremia, you say, well, that's really fucking weird. Why do you have that? Okay, I agree with you. I've seen questions where sodium could be EG 130 milliequivalents per liter, normal range 135 to 145. Some obscure mechanism. If you Google it, it'll talk about decreased cardiac output in heart failure, or not in heart failure, decreased cardiac output in hypothyroidism, which can cause a baroreceptor mediated increase in ADH, which can cause increased free water retention and hyponatremia. 
point is you see it in hypothyroidism. Hypercholesterolemia also in hypothyroidism. So dysthymia, depression as well. And you need to know that you have a lymphocytic infiltrate. I almost, when I was creating this question, I almost made a lymphocytic infiltrate an answer because that is an answer on one of the NBME questions, okay? So transaminitis, if you think this is weird, as I fucking said, uh, when you get to the two CK questions, the clinical master series forms, you're going to encounter a question where you get hypothyroidism and they tell you that the transaminases are elevated. You know the deal. I'm going to make more content. If you like my stuff, subscribe to my channel. And I appreciate your time. That's it.